My brothers and sisters in Christ, in today's gospel, we hear Jesus speak to his followers about the time that will come, the coming of the kingdom of God, when not a stone will be left unturned. And in, of course, the, the response of his disciples is to ask, Oh Lord, when will that time be? How will we recognize the time of your coming? And this is a question that in many ways has tortured people for, for 2,000 years of Christian history. I warned, as we've been reading from the book of Revelation these past several days, I, I warned on the first day that uh, the, the reading came up, that the book of Revelation is not a puzzle to be unlocked. It's not a code that contains the answer of the day and the hour of the Lord's coming. And we know that throughout history, people have claimed to have unlocked how many doomsday cults and prophets have claimed to have figured out the, the date that the world would come to an end. And this is not the way of the Lord. The Lord tells us that we know neither the day nor the hour. We should trust him in that. And so in many ways, we can obsess in energy. When we look at a decaying, in many ways, a broken, a changing, a violent, a chaotic world, there, there's a temptation people always follow. Well, is this the end? Well, this must point to the end. This is the worst it's ever been. This is a sign of the end of the world. Or even in one's personal life, one can become obsessed with their own end, in the sense of, when will I die? What will be the end of me? You know, is this a sign? Is this going to be an illness? Am I going to die from this? You know, and, and we can obsess about the end, the coming end that we know neither the day nor the hour of. And in some ways, we're right to be obsessed with the end, but not about the when or the how. It's enough to know that we will have an end. Our own life will come to an end. Someday the world will come to an end. And the reason we should be focused on the end is because that's our heavenly homeland. Everything, our life, the saving passion of our Lord is directed towards this culmination. And yet our energy towards this end should be on the completion of his salvific work, of the working of his grace in us, of the change that we're called to bring about in the world. This is what our focus should be not towards what is coming, what we don't know. The Lord will bring that to completion. But in the here and now, he has given us the grace. He allows us to participate in his paschal mystery, his timeless sacrifice on the cross. Every time we partake in the Eucharist, the celebration of the Mass, we are invited to be joined to that timeless sacrifice. The Lord sustains us, gives us grace, and tries to bring us to perfection. We, in turn, need to cooperate with that grace given. On Sunday, in the gospel and the separation of the sheep from the goats, we heard a very sobering challenge, the one about how we will ultimately be judged by what we did or did not do for the least of these. In the sense, as I said yesterday, in every person we encounter, in one sense, we're looking into the face of our judge. Am I charitable in this moment? Do I care? Am I compassionate to this person and the next person and the next person? This is what I should be worried about, not about an unknown hour, an unknown day of the end of the world or of my own life, but what I can control here and now, and that is how I respond to God's prompting of grace, how I treat my neighbor. Am I loving? Am I generous? Do I love God and my neighbor with my whole heart, mind, soul, and strength? This is what our mind, our heart is supposed to be preoccupied with all the time, but especially as we come to this last week of the liturgical year and as we cycle into Advent to start a new year, in a sense, as our hearts are still directed, not just toward the Lord's first coming at Christmas, but towards his second coming, the Advent, the time that is an appropriate time to prepare. Are we ready? When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Will he find love on earth? This is what we can control now. May God bless you.